deep rooted psychology. Many people go to spiritualist churches out of curiosity, and some because they claim to have some kind of experience. They had some kind of experience in their recent life, or perhaps in their childhood when their imagination was untamed. They attribute these ideas to some kind of paranormal, but in actuality they could be fully explainable. However, they would prefer to believe there's something more important going on. So they'll go along to a spiritualist church. A spiritualist church is a very liberal, moderate church that believes in mediums, healers, and the like. They might well pop along to a service. A service will involve perhaps a few hymns, or perhaps some modern songs, a few prayers, or maybe a break, a silence. Whatever the case, depending on their style, their technique, the type of church you go to, and eventually, after perhaps a little bit of a philosophy, or some kind of reading, they'll get to the medium, whoever they are, will claim to communicate with the deceased, either directly or via a spirit guide. For perhaps the next hour, a medium will be giving out so-called evidence of the afterlife. Typically, the information is very poor, but that's another video. The person who's gone along might well find it compelling. If they find it uninteresting, they might well leave the church and not come back. They might come another time to see if another medium's any better. They might go to another church to see if their medium is any better. And typically, the mediums do a sort of circuit across the local spiritualist churches, depending when they can get a gig. If the person is interested, they may come many other times, and they may hear about the healing group, which they may give a go. Typically, older people, and those with physical injuries, will come along to the healing session because they consider it to be beneficial. Other groups may include a variety of different styles. There are many different types of healing, different types of service, and different types of circle. The most common type of circle is typically an open circle. It's not always the case. Some churches have numerous closed circles, as in a closed membership. And as you can imagine, an open circle means an open membership. There are different types of circles for development, but the type of group that you'll be able to get into, no problems, is typically an open circle, or perhaps a circle which has a limited membership, but you might have to wait a while to join. That's to say it could be weeks, it could be longer, depending on how many people join the group. But an open circle is typically where anyone can join, providing they're respectful. If they simply want to meditate in the group for the visualization, they're perfectly welcome. To focus on the open circle, what you'll typically find is a circle of chairs. As a new member is required, a new chair will be placed in. The style or organization of the group may well vary. Some deal with the Lord's Prayer as some kind of protection. Others simply use another protection prayer. Others don't do prayer. Perhaps they have some other kind of protection technique. A visualization where you meet your guide and then come back. And then a talk about the experiences you may have had. This can vary. Some people focus on drum meditation, chanting, and other practices too. Typically, Christian spiritualists tend to use Christian themes more often. Whereas non-denominational spiritualists will typically have a lack of Christian themes, per se. Those of a Christian point of view will typically express a Christian view of their meditation. They might say they contacted Jesus, or spoke to him, or they saw him, because he is the strongest guide. Hindus will say something like Ganesh, or perhaps some other deity. Indeed, Judaism, and indeed spiritualist Muslims, and other denominations and variations, will express their own view to some greater or lesser degree. When it comes down to people who are more open, as far as New Age ideas, they'll express their own view on that, talking about the Archangels, which overlaps Christianity and Judaism, but also is heavily based in New Age. If a person believes in aliens as opposed to angels or God, they will experience aliens. There is typically a strong correlation between their own personal belief, their own very limited perspective, and what they experience in meditation. The curious new spiritualist may well have certain experiences that they then put into context, depending on who they listen to, what they listen to, what they read, or perhaps what they watch as far as documentaries online. This can place bizarre moments in their life in a different world altogether, as opposed to being a matter of imagination, delusion, or perhaps even full-blown hallucination. Instead, these experiences were placed in the view or the realm of uh, spiritualist phenomena.
The practice of meditation in the spiritualist church is typically heavily based around visualization and promoting visual experiences. So typically, visualization is used in order to stimulate the imagination. Once you stimulate the imagination sufficiently with your visualizations, your development in that direction, you can actually have some quite strong experiences that appear to create themselves. So through months or years of mental reorientation, you end up with people creating very visual experiences. But not only that, they're also looking for experiences. If something happens, something unexplained, rather than simply saying, oh, I wonder why that happened. Instead, they'll go, oh, must be a sign of angel protection or an angel being nearby. So people will make these things fit as extra proof on top of the visual experiences and indeed in some cases physical and audible experiences. A person as they experience and develop their belief will put even more faith into what they experience. They're creating experiences which then become more and more vivid and it seems to be something more than it actually is. But of course they believe there's something more to it because they now have a strong belief in it. Over the course of time experiencing things, things that give them comfort, their deceased relatives are still looking over them. They'll make friends in the group, They'll make friends in the church. They'll eventually go into more exclusive uh, circles, closed circles. They'll begin development, perhaps even pay for courses, perhaps even go off to special training centers to learn how to be a medium, how to express the information, how to become a better medium. And it's all very comforting, very supportive, and reinforcing of the belief. But of course, some people don't even need to go that far. They simply have the experiences. It seems to be real. And perhaps if they come in as a vulnerable person, person who can't let go of their loved ones, their deceased relatives or friends, then they will adapt to the belief very quickly. It becomes a support mechanism. And when they deal with different perspectives, different points of view, they say their energy has dropped. Or they even talk about things like curses and psychic vampires in some cases. Even though the only process that's taken place is that their inflated sense of self and comfort has been deflated by mild critique. The comforting nature of the belief, the psychological reinforcement, the fundamentalism to a particular point of view without the ability to deal with critique, it's all very suggestive. It points out the very nature of spiritualism, not dissimilar to a great many other beliefs around the world, wishing to believe in certain ideas and convincing yourself through certain psychological processes. Thankfully, in most cases, there are very few problems with spiritualism. They're usually quite liberal. They're usually very open-minded, very accepting, accepting of different cultures, ethnicities, and even creeds. And they typically, due to regulation by the government, but also very often due to the attitude of the church, will in fact not have a problem with modern medicine, or indeed having their practices alongside modern medicine. There are a few cases and certainly some individuals I could mention here, who reject those points, who are in fact quite divisive and indeed anti-modern medicine. But most spiritualists are average people with a slightly peculiar belief, and they are pretty much harmless, even though they are psychologically manipulating themselves or have been manipulated to have the strong belief that they are correct. I have to say, I think it almost comes a lot comes with a deep psychosis.